Okay, children, we're learning about base. Let's get started. Today's lesson is... Children! Children! Ugh, not again! Welcome back to the Righteous Builds YouTube channel. Today we're going to build a properly sized enclosure for a ported subwoofer. I'm kind of excited. I like building these bigger ones. I guess there's nothing left to do but start the time-lapse music and get going. Now what I'm doing, if you're cur curious on my curving technique, I put a mark about every quarter of an inch. And that gives me curf or gives me cuts that are a lot closer together than what you would normally see. Now I also, um, I leave a little bit more wood at the end. Um, I don't know if you can see this, but I'm going to give it a shot. But I'm leaving a fair amount. Some people go almost darn near through the wood. But because I leave it just a little bit more, it's going to give, it's, it's not going to let you know that it's curved. It just looks like the wood is bending. So anyway, you'll see. Here we go. For the benefit of anybody who is really wanting to know how to do curves, that is too much wood. I forgot to account for the thickness of the track. <laughs> now, these don't have to be exactly spaced the same apart, but it is very helpful if you can keep them exactly parallel. Curfing is done. Now, once again, that's about, <clears throat> excuse me, that's about the width you want. Must be one of the neighbor kids. But anyway, question. What if you mess up your curves? For instance, right there, not parallel. As long as you fix it, like I did right there. What if you mess up again? like I did right there. <laughs> as long as you fix it, yeah, it's okay. So, yeah, I messed up twice. <clears throat> but again, it's not the end of the world. I'm going to go through it with some nice epoxy filler. Look at the bend you get with this Baltic birch. 
See? It's okay with bending. And it's pretty flexible and going past 90 degrees here. And it's, it's not complaining. <clears throat> also, with the epoxy filler, I can, I can slather that stuff in and it's going to be ready to go in 30 minutes. I don't have to wait overnight. None of that nonsense. Here we go. I did a couple of things while you guys weren't looking. As you can see, made a couple of holes and I filled in this little section right here just because I decided that I wanted a tighter radius on that curve. Uh, you can see that the effect that that's going to have is it's going to make it just turn a little sharper. I don't know. I think it just looks nicer with a tighter radius, but that is up to you. Again, this, as long as it's kept minimal, doesn't bother me. It doesn't affect the bend. As long as you get everything straightened out in the end, it's fine. Let's make a speaker cover, shall we? We are at the test fitting phase. You probably remember this driver from the last video. Yep, I'm gonna go ahead and put it in this one. As much as I like the passive radiator design, it doesn't produce those really low, yummy bass notes. And I'm not sure I can live without that, so. <clears throat> I'm gonna be using this one. Now you probably notice it is sitting in there very, very tightly. Too tight, in fact. So I'm gonna pull that out. I'm gonna bump it out by roughly an eighth of an inch and uh, it should be just where I want it for paint and uh, whatever else. <clears throat> You'll notice that the piece it's going into, we set it just like that and that fits just fine. So it'll be a partial double baffle, but that's plenty with one inch Baltic birch. I'm really not worried about the strength. It does really well. I don't have to brace this stuff unless I'm doing a really, really big build, and this is only a mid-size build. I've just got everything laying together here, but it's starting to look like something. Of course, this port is going to wrap all the way. It's going to be as long as I can get away with. I want to turn this thing to about 18 hertz. You can see it's every bit of six cubic feet. Going to be fun. We're ready for glue up. The port is done. I've got a 30 degree ramp on there because Really, the only air that's going to be moving back and forth is right in front of the port. And the rest of it is just going to be area for the waves to expand. I've got a blinking light here. Let me see if I can fix that. Let's see if that stays. But as you can see, we're about 67 inches of port. I wouldn't want to go too much longer than that. But that's a lot of port. So this thing, <laughs> this thing should be able to do home theater duty, but also, I mean, I'm a deep bass guy. Uh, mid bass gets a little bit annoying to me. This is going to be able to do nice deep bass. Another thing I want to do is 
test this thing out I'm using the exact same driver. I did harvest the amp out of the passive radiator subwoofer. And so when we do our test, it's going to be a direct test, same driver, same amp. The only thing that's different is going to be the enclosure. So it's going to be interesting to see what just changing the enclosure will do to the results. In my excitement to get this beauty done, I forgot to put the 45 degree angle pieces in there that smooth the airflow inside of the port. There's one in here and then there's one that's in a really tough place to get to on the other side of that ramp. So I've got to make those. Question is, how long do I make them and still make sure that I have that I still have the, the full 2.75 inches of space for the air to flow through? Well, it's a good thing I'm a math teacher. So here's what we're dealing with. If anybody else has the same issue, maybe this will be helpful to you. So we've got a hard 90 degree angle in there and I don't want a hard 90 degree angle in there. And then I've got the other piece of the port that comes around like this. Now I did measure this, thankfully, to be uh, four and a half inches. <clears throat> so I know that. And I know that I want the full 2.75 inches in there. So, right around there, this is 2.75, that leaves 1.75 here. Now, because these are 45, 45, 90 triangles, each one of these, I'm just gonna call them X and we'll just realize that X equals 1.75. Each one of those is 1.75. Knowing that, if this is 1.75 and that's 1.75, then let's see, what does that make? 3.5 so I need a piece that's 3.5 inches wide to cover that so there you go a little bit of real life math for you guys so if my students ever ask what am I gonna use this in real life well there you go I've set up this little simulation to make sure that I've done things right. Now, this is the width of the port right here, and it turns the corner. Um, now I do have it rounded off, so this has gone about a half an inch further than what it shows. And, <clears throat> excuse me, it looks like we are right where we need to be. Um, I'm gonna shave just a little bit off just to be sure, but yeah, we're right about where we want to be on that. So, once again, math works. All right, wish me luck. We're gonna glue this thing and hope for the best. Normally I put glue on the ends too, but all that's gonna do is smear its way off as I slide this thing down. And these things aren't for structural support, anything like that. Just in there to smooth the air as it goes back and forth. And I don't want chuffing, so these things need to be as big as they can possibly be without being a restriction, because anything bigger can cause turbulence. Anything smaller can cause turbulence. And that's what chuffing is. It's turbulence. Gonna have to take the jacket off for this one. My mic on my shirt, here we go. You guys notice my fancy new microphone system? Oh, that's right on my neck. Hopefully you guys can still hear me. Okay, wish me luck. I'm gonna need it. <laughs> 
No bueno, holy cow. Okay, I just tore that thing up. Yikes, okay. Um, we better hit it from a different angle, huh? It is time to install some power. Amplifier, of course, but I'm using this to make the hole to put the amplifier in. But if you don't want to tell me now, I guess I'll never know. Losing almost all my energy. It's getting hard to talk. She's looking nice and flush. All right. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and cut it this time. In the next video, we are going to test this thing. Uh, I'm gonna throw some paint on it. I'm still kind of deciding what I'm gonna go with, whether it's gonna be Duratex or whether it's gonna be something with more of a wood grain finish. I guess you'll see in the next video, but I know that this is gonna have some very different results than we saw with the passive radiator system. Might not be as flat a curve as the passive radiator sub had, but I know that it's gonna go deep, like really deep. I guess we'll see. Remember, if you build it and it's cool, that's a righteous build. <laughs>